We have a forum. We're expecting Ted. Uh, so we have a quorum with a person on the phone. Uh, Chad can come and take a seat at this table. I know it's been a long time uh, since we've done this, but in February uh, we'll leave our intimate, cozy space here, and we'll go to the, and we'll, and we'll go to the, 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 the boardroom. So, uh, and I'll explain why in, why in a moment. But uh, you do have a quorum. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order with a quorum, so we know who's on the phone and who's present. Could you read the roll, please? Uh, Alderwoman Houston, not present. Alderman Cohn. Present. Uh, Chair Stouter. Present. Uh, Commissioner Bradley. Here. Commissioner Powers. Present. Commissioner Peebles. Present. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Jay. Here. Uh, Commissioner Spade, not present, and Commissioner Byzantainer, not present. Okay. So we do have a quorum. Uh, for convenience sake, I guess, for presentations and people who are attending, we're going to go down and pick up item number five and begin with that tonight. Good evening. This is a zoning of one parcel at 2700 South Grand. Uh, it's presently dual zoned B2 family zoning district and the H area commercial district. And the rezoning is so that it will be all be in the H district. The site is on the southeast corner of South Grand at Sydney, uh, right. corner from Targrove Park uh, in the Targrove East neighborhood. It's uh, 1.7 acres. Uh, it's L-shaped uh, with the building in the rear of the property and a large parking lot in the front. Uh, 25,000 square foot building, uh, one story, uh, built in the 1960s. And presently, there's a, a, a food store at Alps, which I think is always low prices, and Dollar General. Uh, this uh, rezoning extends the H district to the entire site and eliminates the dual zoning. And uh, they are, there's a Proposal for a Kroger store uh, in the site. Mm -hmm. The owner developed uh, can uh, fill it in on that. This is the dollar store and the food store is to the right. Uh, this is a view of the parking lot and uh, the commercial building. Uh, this is Tower Grove Manor next door. Just to uh, this is uh, South Grand, uh, this is Tiger Park, Sydney. There's some residential properties adjacent to that. Uh, this is the street and uh, buildings to the south. Uh, the uh, Alhambra Court is a small street that runs behind it. The back of the uh, commercial building and its loading docks goes onto the street. And this is the zoning map of uh, H Commercial in this portion of South Bay. And uh, this is kind of an unusual block, but then a lot of the parcels go all the way back uh, to the next street, um, including uh, this parcel. So your portion is still zoned B2 family from one to the probably residential. Uh, this is the vicinity of the rezoning. Uh, Targo Park is on the left. Targo Manor is the tall residential building on the right. Uh, this is the Magnolia Grace Hill Head Start Program. Uh, both of these properties also go all the way back to the street behind us. Uh, to the north uh, is another uh, elderly uh, housing and offices. Uh, there's a vacant gas station, but we'll see at Chapter 99 next month uh, if this is going to be a coffee shop. That you uh, there's residences to the north, and these are the this is two of the four houses that are adjacent to the parking lot. You can see the parking lot right here. 
made back up to the side of the store. Um, this is another view of the residential on the, on the north side and the commercial on the south side. The strategic land use plan uh, calls for neighborhood commercial for uh, this whole site and most of the frontage along South Grand going north. Uh, staff recommends approving the petition to change the zoning to H area commercial as being in conformity with the strategic land use plan neighborhood commercial area, and uh, which encourages commercial uses uh, to serve adjacent neighborhood. And this commercial certainly does that. Um, the zoning administrator recommends this rezoning, and uh, it uh, gets rid of the dual zoning and uh, helps the Parcel of the uses that are presently there and in, in the future to conform uh, with the uh, zoning. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. And Mr. Shaw of Grand Real Real Estate Holding uh, is the owner of the building and business also, if I'm correct. Yeah. He's available for questions. Any questions, Senator? Was there a um, was there an, a, an impetus for why you came in to do the rezoning? Is there a plan and a foot for uh, future development or just being um, proactive? No plan per se. We subdivided the building about two years ago now. Uh, we put in a family dollar lease on about 40% of the property. And just recently I closed down my operation because I was the owner occupant of the space. And we think interior renovation at etc. Mm -hmm. making way for uh purpose to start to cool. And uh, they're gonna be doing a uh, much more trimmer operations similar than all these contacts. Um I have about eight years left on the family dollar lease, eight and a half actually, and Kroger's gonna come in with uh ten year lease. So long term, it's going to be as is grocery store slash retail in the same kind of format that it's at right now, and that's the way I wish to maintain it. The whole objective of rezoning was to kind of clean up the church and be and just keep it as commercial as I suppose it's meant to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thank you. I'll just add that over the years, he's been in our office <laughs> a number of times getting variances at the Board of Adjustment mm -hmm. always for some kind of retail or grocery store that was going to go there. So this was just a way to clean it up. Thank you. It, it cleaned it up. What conversations have you had with the neighborhood on the on Alhambra? As, uh, I have to, I mean, as far as uh, the rezoning? Or yeah, the rezoning. I haven't had any conversations. Uh, I had a meeting, of actually several, with the Tower Grove Neighborhood East Association, and I, I assume, or I presume, they address all the concerns of the residents in that association. And, um, and I mean, they supported it. They had mm -hmm. some guidelines for me to maintain, which I did. Improvements on the exterior, parking lot, I did that. Lighting, etc. Um, so once all those were maintained, and I kept consistent with those, you know, they were happy. But I didn't have any. First, on a direct conversation with the residents, it was just made into the neighborhood uh, association. And there will be a public hearing, I assume. Yes, this is an interesting case where the current zoning actually is there to protect those neighbors. Uh, but the building is also there. So, yeah. okay. so we're not changing anything physical. But that was uh, one of the things when we were in the meeting, is they had said that, that the whole, because it was dual zoning, so that it could protect the, as you say, the neighbors. And, uh, and because of that, they said that you know you need to do certain things to gain our support, and I abided by those, and I did that, and, and just seemed happy with it, and that's why. Uh, and that was with the Tower Group, right? And and the Alderman supported it because the neighbor association. Any other questions? Making a motion to approve the motion. So moved. Second. Been made and seconded. Could you read the roll, please? Sure. Um, Alderman Cohn. Aye. 
Uh, Chair Stouter. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Peebles. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Spade. Aye. And motion passes with all present voting yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Shelter. And you may have noticed in that one is that during the strategic land use process, that whole block were, uh, was, was in the commercial category. Item number six. There's uh, two redevelopment plans. Uh, the first one, the uh, Chapter 99, and the second one. Uh, it's going to handle with the Chapter 353, which is a little bit different. Uh, this is uh, the west portion of downtown. Uh, Union Station's off to the east. This is Market Street, uh, Interstate 64, 40. Um, Market, South Jefferson, uh, and particular property is on the south, uh, north uh, east corner. Uh, it's 2.4 acres between the two parcels that make up the office site and the one parcel that, that's the parking on the south side of market. Uh, there's a, a three-story office building. It, it actually is it's two on one end and uh, three on the east end. Um, it's been vacant since 2011 and uh, rated in fair condition by the Land Transfer Redevelopment Authority. Um, Green Street uh, acquired the property uh, for $4.6 million. Um, and it's a former Wells Fargo Advisor office building, uh, which was set up for uh, one, uh, one tenant. Uh, Green Street's plans is to renovate and do a major reconfiguration of this 84,000 square feet so that it will be an LED certified multiple tenant building. There's going to be two tenants and uh, basically the east and the west uh, portions will be uh, two different tenants uh, with the different uh, mechanical systems and entrances. And, unique features to those spaces. And uh, there's 165 parking spaces across the street, and uh, the total project amount is $4.7 million. Uh, this is an aerial view, of Market Street, Jefferson, Wells Fargo's campus, uh, MSD is down here. And uh, this is the redevelopment site uh, Two parcels with the building and one parcel with the parking. And uh, this is some views of the building. Uh, we we're talking about there being two major entrances. Uh, the first, uh, the western one is going to be on the, uh, the corner of Jefferson and Market, and the other entrance is uh, to the east uh, near Chestnut. And uh, this is a view uh, from Market Street, from the parking lot, looking over, and uh, this is the parking lot. Uh, the FBI going to the east. Marriott Courtyard Hotel is uh, to the west. Uh, this is some ground floor elevations. You can see there's uh, two spaces, each with the, their own uh, rendering. Uh, the western portion uh, is a two-story, and the eastern uh, is three stories above ground. In the vicinity, of course, uh, to the west is the Wells Fargo Advisors Campus and uh, parking uh, to the south of Market. Uh, to the north is another office building, also owned by Green Street. Uh, I think St. Elizabeth Paul uh, offices are in there. And uh, to the south of the uh, office building and to the west of the parking lot is the MSD uh, headquarters and offices. Uh, there's also buildings in the vicinity of the parking lot. Uh, the uh, south and west of the 
office in the parking lot is the Marriott Courtyard Hotel. Uh, on the east side is the FBI offices. And uh, across the street from the parking lot uh, is Jefferson Bank of Trust. And just to the east of that is the jury uh, in. Both sites uh, in the area are in the business industrial preservation area. And uh, staff finds them in conformity with the strategic land use plan, business industrial preservation area. They're also very close to the, the uh, specially mixed use uh, that covers close to downtown. Uh, this plan provides for 10 years of tax abatement. There is no eminent domain. And uh, staff recommends approval of the guiding study. And I'll be uh, glad to answer questions. And uh, Brian Pratt of Green Street is here uh, to also discuss uh, the project. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, this is an, just an reviewing of the lighting study. Yeah. <laughs> The argument seems to be that because it's vacant, it's lighted. Um, I mean, we as a, as a commission are supposed to rule not on the tax abatement, but on the determination of lighting. This, this seems to be an example of the, the definition of lighting being taken a little too far. Um, uh, it's a pretty nice building. Really glad that it's been repurposed. I can't see through this table if they qualify as a lighted building. Um, uh, and if you the <coughs> the, uh, the check marks, which I only did briefly, there were a few explanations, except for that because it's unoccupied, it's a public hazard. I uh, I. Uh, I would, you know, respond to that, but it, it, uh, it seems to be a, uh, a uh, t taking the blighting definition too far. Do you have any comments? Um, at the LCRA at the meeting, uh, they discussed uh, that this building was set up and functioned as a financial office and uh, that their their goal was to get uh, creative uh, companies in there and, and high tech and wanted to have an LED certified building and the the amenities like entrances and that uh, you know are you know major expenses and uh, they were looking at it as, as, as that it was functional and not uh, not uh, for and for what they were. Wanting. And therefore, uh, lighting uh, was, I guess, more based on economics uh, than physical or social. That's not really the definition of light. I don't think it really is. There's three, three there's economics, social, and physical. David, would, would you plug in on that? Uh, included in the definition of blighted area under 99, 320 sub 3 uh, constitutes an economic or social liability or a menace to the public health, safety, sorry, morals or welfare in its present condition or use. So economic is actually included in the definition. But I have to challenge how is this an economic blight? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's next to MSD, a multi billion dollar headquarter, regional headquarters quarter office and I mean certainly the property values downtown are moving in a different direction than the property values in my neighborhood have been. So Brian, your turn. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you the law. <laughs> I'm just going to prepare the blanks by Brian Green Street. Uh, you know, I think the building was built to address a specific corporate need within a corporate campus. And as a standalone building in and of itself, um, the amount of renovation necessary to reposition it for what the market demand is today 
keep in mind, it's been available from Wells Fargo on the market dating back to prior, really, prior to 2011, but that's when they moved out officially. Um, nobody stepped up to take it as a single purpose building. Some of that's the parking situation, um, but much of it has to do with the layout of the, of the facility in and of itself. Um, so the, the uh, improvements we're proposing to make um, are as much both functional but cosmetic to position the building so that you can attract the type of uh, office footprint, 30,000, 15,000, 60,000. Uh, versus an 85,000 square foot uh, unique use building. And from that perspective, it's functionally obsolete uh, because it was built to be a, a data center for the trust group at AG Edwards. And, and those single purpose users, they could use the bones of those buildings simply um, are few and far between. Um, so it's likely to remain, if you were to leave it in its current condition, in our opinion, vacant for a considerable period of time because it, it simply doesn't fit the market demand today. Uh, so what we're proposing to do is to, to, to redo the front entrance as well as create a, a specific side entrance so that we can have two dedicated entrances. The building would be divided in half, so to speak, so you could do two tenants, possibly three um, on the rear. Um, we do have a 30,000 square foot uh, tenant interested. They're a cloud IT computing company based in St. Louis County. They want to move into the city, um, so the renovation of this building for us is to is to, to do the tech improvements that'll track creative um, companies that want to be in Class A office space don't necessarily want to be in a 30-story tower or 18-story tower downtown, but like the proximity to the central business district. Um, so uh, you know the question of, of light and economic or functional obsolescence and. You know, in this case, I believe is if the building sat vacant, it's likely to remain vacant in its current condition. Um, does the exterior look good? Are there cracks and ceiling paint and all those things that I think physically people associate with blight? Probably not, but I think if you, if you had the opportunity to go to the interior, see the design and the necessary modifications to, to bring this property back to productive use, um, you'd find that it's, it, it is impeded by its, its current configuration. Tell us about your, your renovation and to the lead criteria you're working on. Uh, you know, as is typical of most of our Green Street projects, we, we do like to um, try to achieve lead standards. Uh, a, it's distinguishing in the market. B, it's just sensible design practice and construction, in our opinion. Um, and we find that uh, the type of tenants that we seek to create like to uh, be in the building. So um, I don't know that we have enough necessarily have the checklist fully figured out at this point because we're still going through design and other things, but uh, you know, we'll be striving to at a minimum be in the lead certification or lead silver level for the building. And what the the tax abatement effectively allows us to do is some of these improvements that you really can't recapture value from through the lease rate. Um, I mean new entrances, things like that. It takes a lot of money to do that, but it's difficult to push the rent level to offset those costs. Um, and that's where the, the economic uh, need for a tax abatement fits the situation. And Brian, the, the parking is, that's, I always thought that was part of the American campus. Uh, so do we. <laughs> so we took a closer look. So um, MSD has over the years rented some of that from Wells Fargo. And, you know, as AG Edwards built the garages, uh, on the west side of Jefferson, that lot probably became less important to them, mm -hmm. but it was included in our acquisition and, it, and is necessary for us, obviously, to provide sufficient parking for. So that long, the well, Wells Fargo. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a one yeah. in conjunction with the building. Is there any restoration needs for that parking lot? Uh, we'll be doing some repainting and updates, security enhancements. Uh, to the to the lot itself as well. Uh, it's in reasonably good shape, but before we do have a use on it, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly be making sure the asphalt's in adequate condition. Any other questions or comments? Move approval. Second. Then moving and seconded that we approve the blind study and it. Conformity of the land use plan. Um, can you read the roll, please? Certainly. Uh, Alderman Cohn. Aye. Uh, Chair Stouter. Aye. 
Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Peebles. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Spade. Aye. And motion passes with all present voting yes. Well, I think maybe the only person on the board that's heard my rant, maybe Patrick, it could be Dan, we frequent the same bar, um, <coughs> is that uh, the city of Clayton has, has blighted two buildings in the middle of Clayton. Uh, and not only did they blight two buildings in the city of Clayton for uh, two somewhat historic not necessarily designated, but of character and a pedestrian scale, uh, to be replaced with a high-rise tower. The uh, granting of tax abatement was a simple one-size-fits-all. It was a 20-year tax abatement for that and in the city of Clayton. And so uh, you can tell that I probably do rant about that a little bit because uh, I will say uh, on this sort of modest project that you hear, uh, uh, we have other places a little further in the central west end, uh, lots being developed. Uh, a key one is the one that we passed, which is at the old uh, Heart Association site uh, across from the, the, the library. And it's going to be a high rise tower uh, of, of 200 plus units. Betsy had spent a good deal of her life working on design review as part of it uh, because it's in the historic districts in the form voice code. Uh, and I will say that, that the scrutiny for that was extreme. Not, excuse me, not extreme. Was appropriate for being in that marketplace. And the ultimate tax abatement that came for that from our scrutiny for wanting the prideful things that Dan talks about was 16 years because it ended up being something that, that was, let's see what we're getting, see what challenges that we're overcoming, and, and, and come to that. And so, so I'm sort of proud of us as a city in that regard, and I'm pissed as hell at Clayton for just being, oh, let's, let's just do this. So. Well, I think our, uh, I would suggest that we, our blighting report is a little better covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Time. Yeah, but, uh, I agree. Because uh, I'd like to vote responsibly and really understand what it is that, that in this form that give me any, uh, any direction. By the way, I think Green Street is a terrific company, and I, and I really think this is a great project. But, uh, but I, I do think we should take this chart seriously if we're taking trouble about it. And you're right. It starts with LCRA. That's the reform. <coughs> we, we could spend some effort. Go on to item number seven, which is the chapter three position. So, uh, many of you commissioners have been around for a while. Here's your quiz. How many of you have been around when we voted for the establishment of a new 353? <laughs> Some of you might have been. Cortex, yes. Yeah. So, so, uh, and the redevelopment rubric uh, uh, 353 is a, a relatively a, a rare occurrence, more rare now than in the past. Uh, 353 being uh, applied at Cortex in a, in a new situation, uh, relatively new, uh, 200 acres, uh, giving them some self-management to it. Uh, and what Roman's about ready to present is uh, about an old 353. Again, it's a geography, not a particular individual site. I say that because you may know that I have a bias. I like that we do redevelopment areas versus the individual buildings. That's certainly what the case is. And the case in this particular situation is they've been around for a while. Uh, and Roman has an aspect of this existing one to present. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the Commission. Uh, as Don mentioned, this is an amendment to an existing Chapter 353 uh, development plan. Uh, addendum number six to the development plan of the Cleveland Landing Redevelopment Corporation was submitted by the Redevelopment Corporation on December the 1st to the Planning Commission for its review. Um, the Cleveland Landing, I think everybody is familiar with, it's a nine block area um, by the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Bridge, the Mississippi River, the East Bridge, and the newly designated um, Interstate 44. 
Um, it includes a mix of commercial uses. Uh, those include uh, offices, parking facilities, bars and restaurants in a uh, historic riverfront setting. The, uh, virtually the entire district is located in a uh, National Register Historic District. And as you know, it attracts uh, lots of uh, conventioneers and tourists, uh, particularly during the summer years. Uh, this amendment would essentially extend the development plan uh, for an additional 25 years. That's basically what's being proposed here. The addendum wouldn't affect the current lighting status of the development plan and doesn't involve any proposed development projects or any proposed land uses, unlike many of the development plans that we typically uh, review. The uh, existing development corporation is the Laclede Land and Redevelopment Corporation. John Clark is the president of that organization. Uh, he's here tonight as is Craig Biesterfeld of Hush F of Blackwell, um, the attorney that represents the, uh, the corporation. They're both here tonight and will be available for any questions that you may have. Just by way of background, uh, since this is a, a, a rather uh, old uh, redevelopment area, the uh, Laclede Landing Redevelopment Area was established by ordinance back in 1975. Uh, that ordinance approved the development plan that Laclede Land and Redevelopment Corporation submitted. Uh, since then, the development plan has been amended five times. Uh, the most recent amendment, which was amendment addendum number five, was approved back in 1998. That was one year before our current planning commission uh, was established. Uh, the previous five amendments were reviewed by the planning commission's predecessor, which was the, the Community Development Commission. Um, the Planning Commission's recommendation for Chapter 353 development plans uh, by statute is to include a determination of several conditions and to provide a rationale for that determination. However, in this case, the Community Development Commission, which was the, the prior um, or the predecessor of the Planning Commission, previously reviewed that development plan for all of the required determinations in that statute so the Planning Commission, in essence, doesn't need to make any of those determinations at this point. Um, board Bill number 209, uh, which would establish or which would uh, further this uh, amendment of the, the redevelopment plan, was introduced by uh, Phyllis Young, who, as you know, is the former alderman of the 7th Ward. Uh, she has since resigned, and that uh, automatic position is currently vacant. Uh, but she did introduce it prior to her, her resignation. Um, the city's strategic land use plan designates the entire McLeave Landing area as well as much of the uh, surrounding area as a specially mixed use area. Um, uh, as I mentioned previously, it includes a mix of, of uses from offices, parking facilities, bars and restaurants. So it fits well with this specially mixed use area. However, given the fact that there are no proposed uses or proposed development projects, technically, the Planning Commission doesn't necessarily need to, to review conformity with the strategic land use plan in this particular case. Um, but it is in it's conformity with, with the plan. Um, in terms of the comments, uh, currently tax abatement is only available um, in this area with the consent of the Planning Commission and the President of the Board of Public Service, who, as you know, is, is Rich Bradley here on our commission. Uh, that provision would not be affected by this <coughs> addendum. And the uh, development plan no longer authorizes the use of eminent domain, and that too would not be affected by this agenda. Uh, staff is recommending approval of addendum number six to the development plan of the McLeave Landing Redevelopment Corporation, which again is a, a chapter 353 uh, development plan. Uh, Mr. Clark and, and Mr. Biesterfeld are, are here tonight, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And one of the things, because we keep referencing them as an entity, is that in a 353, there is an entity that gets rights to control, in a certain degree, the area bounded by the 353. That corporation is in existence in, in here. Uh, and the, uh, the, the ongoing ability of that uh, organization to do its monitoring and how things occur in accordance with the plan is what gets extended here. David or Craig, did I summarize that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, um, uh, earlier slide said 
that these conditions had already been tested in 1998. Do we have any basis for knowing that in, 19, in 2015 they're still, I mean, they've been reviewed, the conditions are still valid? Well, um, just, to, just to give you an idea of some of those um, conditions, they were included in your um, in the resolution, of they were. Um, so, for instance, uh, I'll, I'll read the, the ones that were more most pertinent. Whether the public purpose oh, declared in this chapter will be effectuated by the development plan, uh, whether it's in the public interest. Again, those determinations were made by the um, Media Development Commission in consultation with with David Meyer, our attorney. Um, uh, he basically said that. Uh, we did not have to go forward and make those same uh, evaluations. And one of the things you will all have heard is that uh, no property gets tax abatement as a result of this action. I guess I'd be curious to hear um, lots happened since 1975, both good and bad. I kind of feel like we've gone through this heyday period and now we're kind of in this dip and but yet there's all these good things happening on around with City Arch River and uh, North Riverfront development, and who knows, maybe we'll have two football stadiums in the area. But what I would be interested to hear what's the outlook for the, the corporation as you look towards the next generation of this um, development. From the, be from the beginning, the <clears throat> I think in retrospect, Personally, now being the head of the group, I, I believe that you know residential should have maybe been part of it as it all got developed at the same time. I think the phasing in of it and the timing has been an enemy. Whereas there were three, right when I started, there were three uh, uh, plans for development of residential that I kind of came up with and some of it had started right before I came in. That was eight years ago, and then as we all know, the economy goes sideways, all three of them went out the window. I think we're at a point now where that is not either an excuse or is real, that there are things happening and a lot of money and a lot of effort and a lot of people are involved in a lot of construction. Frankly, in the next nine months, year, it's, <clears throat> we're gonna have a very tough time down there because of all the construction. But you know, with progress, there is a lot of good things that are going to happen. All the activity that will happen right to the south of us on the other side of the East Bridge where the Arch Garage will be taken away. That's a big positive. It's a positive for residential. That GRG bought what is now the Switzer lot and is a placeholder for what likely would be residential. Um, there is, uh, it's interesting. I was in a meeting yesterday. We're out of parking. It's tearing down the garage. That's all a construction site. We're out of parking spaces during the day because a lot of the properties are pretty full of office space. Now, some of the bars and restaurants with the construction and what have you, all of our village, there is, you know, we're facing some real challenges there. But as we move forward, we've had in the last couple of years people looking at, say, where GRG just bought some property. We had uh, some folks that wanted to put a low-end economy scale hotel there. Without this reaffirmation of 353 rights, we wouldn't have been able to do too much about it. And we would have needed friends in City Hall or what have you, but if they want to build it, they would have just built it. And so the highest best use of the property is higher end residential and I, I think that's that's going to be happening because of all the, that's going on around us. So it's their ability to to maintain and implement their their plan uh, that we're extending. The uh, hotel that was going to be able to squeeze in <laughs> prior to us doing this uh, would not have been in the, really accordance with the plan and not desired. GIG actually ended up buying the property as sort of a friendly party to buy the property uh, uh, and incorporate it into 
<coughs> a more comprehensive planning effort. So, so that was a squeaker. Can we have a lot of agreements and and merchants associations and sort of legal infrastructure in place down there that is dependent upon the 353 plan still remaining effective? And so what I want to do is to extend the term of the 353 plan so that we still have the ability to intercede when somebody tries to, to do something that's not consistent. So has there um, been a... I, I just want to make sure because I've seen plans. I just don't know if they're official or not, but is there an updated master plan for the 353 area? Yes. Is that the MVVA document? Uh, M MV MVVA, Michael Van Valkenburg out of Brooklyn, New York. Right. That is just for Saarinen's kind of a design of the art. Uh, un understand that. that. They're doing. Right. They are influencing some of the activity uh, where Washington comes into 3rd right. Street and underneath 44, and that's all been redesigned and they're working on it as we sit here. Um, but our, our street plan, streetscape type of building faces, that's been updated since the original HOK plan, and that was done three years ago. Okay. Is that something we've seen, Doug? I was that just going to say, for clarity's sake, though, you might be talking about somewhat different plans. The plan that was through here was last through here in 98 as an amendment. The streetscape was for the public right. improvements. Right. So this, this particular thing that you're looking at really was last year in 1998. Okay. Other questions? Move approval. Second. And moving second is Previous roles. And the previous roles been requested. Are there any objections um, on the telephone or any objections by any of the commissioners here to the use of the previous role? Hearing none, the matter passes. So I'll, I'll ask these two gentlemen to stay for just a second. Okay. Uh, to drill a little bit on, on Ted's comments uh, and something that they know that I'm probably going to say. Uh, is that in this area north of the Eads Bridge to the new stand span between 70 and the river, uh, John spoke of, boy, it got tough there when the economy went bad. You know, the, there were a lot of dynamic things that we're thinking about there. People bought buildings with the idea, or at least north of the uh, bought buildings with an idea for Ferris wheel, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and nothing happened. And the arch grounds is a transformation uh, is going to cause some part in our dust type uh, concerns for a while. Um, where this is leading to is that uh, next week, the week after, we, the planning agency, SLDC, in partnership with the GRG, meaning we're using GRG's money for the most part, uh, is looking at that entire area as uh, uh, under a new planning auspices as to how, now that we have some definition to the north uh, with the new bridge, how do we look at, one, leveraging the river and recreation as an asset to help formulate a real definitive master plan for the whole area? That's a work that we're just just undertaking uh, now. And I, I, it's important uh, to say that because there's a lot, of, a lot of thoughts going on in this area. And the second part, and what I'm going to smile, is that, is that uh, in discussions with Luke Leeds Landing is a reminder that in this transformation and the, and the greater good, we might ultimately need to uh, use the city's toolbox in terms of regulations and whatnot that might overlay uh, on, onto the area that's in Luke Leeds Landing and they're agreeing to cooperate with so of that nature. So I'm pretty excited about it. One of the things that people have, have here we say fairly often is if you look at that rectangle and stand in any of the streets to, at, at the top, at, at, at the left, and look down the streets, it's the only one of the few places in the city where you can see the water. You can see the Mississippi. The other places, the North Riverfront Park, uh, Sister Marie Charles Park, but the, and the, the Arch Bronze is different, but that's a unique attribute. You can walk, you can see to the, to the river, and uh, we want to amplify that location from that point of view. Okay. 
And having worked down there, sometimes the river comes up this And sometimes the river comes <laughs> up Because the, it's the floodplain is, is natural. It's, it's, the, it's the gates up by the, by the power plant. So. so I think that's pretty exciting. Um, Thank you. Now, I will have to say that there are two uh, principles of design firms that knew that there was a property opportunity, and uh, it's being performed by other firms, but uh, there's that. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's just stay in this mode and go on to item number eight. And, uh, talk to us about the preservation. Okay, another question. Thanks, guys. Another question for for our members. Uh, how many of you have been around when we've done a determination that we would or would not take on a review from the preservation board? Yes. Yeah. A couple of you. All right. Um, uh, so uh, uh, it's something that we do infrequently. So Dick will present. And if we need to have a little conversation to help uh, get people's uh, uh, knowledge base of it uh, better, we will. I think this is number 12 as far as the reviews that have gone to the Planning Commission for this decision. And I, I believe uh, <coughs> 11 times that we reviewed it in one time, they reported it. Not, not this one. You're talking right. generically. In, in, in the past. Uh, so, this is a house at, at 2225 Chippewa in the Mandela <coughs> neighborhood. It's at the discretion of the planning commission to either accept or deny the undertaking of review. Um, as, as we said in the, in the resolution, there's, there's it's a two-step process. Uh, today is the first uh, step. Uh, voting on if it will, you will conduct uh, the review. The second step then uh, depends on what your decision is. Uh, if the Planning Commission decides to conduct the review, uh, you provide notice to the affected parties and there's a setting a, a time of the actual review, which we'll kind of discuss later. Uh, the other uh, option is if, if the Planning Commission decides not to do the review, uh, it's treated like other preservation board decisions, uh, and uh, the applicant and other parties uh, standing in this can may take an administrative appeal to the court. So, uh, now, uh, the major criteria in the ordinance uh, limits the review to determining the correctness of the provisional decision, and then that's what. Uh, the decision is called. It's called the decisional decision of the preservation board. Uh, by reviewing the record as adduced uh, before the preservation board in light of applicable and appropriate standards. And I think most of you remember from doing this, I guess, two or three years ago, that you will get a if we if you decide to take this review, you will get a large amount of material. Uh, and oral and written arguments may be made, but no new or additional evidence may be considered. Um, this is background, the Preservation Board decision uh, denying the demolition of 2225 Chippewa. It's a two-story single-family house. Uh, it has fire damage, and uh, it was, it's in the Marine Villa National Historic District and it's owned by Abigail Willis. Uh, the matter was called, uh, deferred, and then heard and considered by the, by the Preservation Board for three hearing dates uh, starting in June uh, and July, a three month period, and then they came back in October. Uh, Eric Kurensky is, is here uh, from uh, Savo. Attorney at law um, and filed a review request on behalf of the property owner uh, in a letter dated November 18, 2014. Uh, 
in general, the procedures are that the demolition permits are applied for in the building division. They get routed to reviewers at the Cultural Resources Office. Uh, then a decision uh, of the Cultural Resources Office, uh, the applicant doesn't agree, they can appeal to the Preservation Board, which, which is what happened. And then the Planning Commission can choose to review the visional decision of the Preservation Board. Um, so I guess the requested action is the planning commission discussion with the staff followed by a vote in regards to accepting the undertaking of this review or not uh, at a future date. Um, a little bit of information from the ordinance. Uh, the, plan the planning commission has 20 days to give a written notice and must give a written notice of the decision. And at that same time that that notice given, uh, Cultural Resources Office provides a full and complete evidentiary record produced before the Preservation Board. That can be files of, of what appeared before the Preservation Board. So, uh, there is time needed to get that all together and so, uh, that happens at the same time. We need to consider getting that record together and officially making the notice. Uh, and it talks at that time of making a decision on the date. You can also discuss that now uh, if you decide to go. So, you know. so simply put, is since, what was it, since 1999, uh, we've had 11 folks that have been aggrieved at the Preservation Board, for lack of a better word, to say, hey, um, uh, we're going to exercise our opportunity to ask the Planning Commission to take another look at it, to review the same materials as not new evidence that the Preservation Board uh, had uh, and do that uh, in a thorough matter. It's a, it's, a, it's a matter that takes a little time to do. Um, and ask for a new vote uh, where we can approve what the Commission did uh, overturn it or make certain modifications to it, or you can. And uh, then if at that outcome uh, they feel further aggrieved, they could go to court. So it's uh, one last possibility at the city level to, to, to look at the evidence and, and make a determination. Uh, and we've agreed to take on these reviews 10 out of the last 11 times. So the 11th was was uh, the uh, couples. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah. 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 Anybody have any? So what action is needed? The action is do we want to undertake this yeah. review? Yeah. I think one of the unique situations here is that you have the older person actually sitting on that board reviewing this the last three times I guess it came before them, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got the older person saying that he wants to save the building. You've got the Cultural Resource Office asking that the Preservation Review Board deny the application. Just standard. Just standard for things that are within the guidelines of right. Uh, what could be salvageable, what is structurally sound. What is, we've got, you know, letters from the Neighborhood Association came to me at least today. I don't know if everyone else got one. I think the one upside to review would be that we'll probably find that um, we'll probably vote to uphold the decision, I would hope, um, on this board, and that could make the case harder for them in court if they're wanting to go forth with the demolition. So I think that would be one good outcome of review. But I, you know, as a person that lives down the street from this address and part of the neighborhood association, I will definitely hope that this can be upheld in its current form. So I don't know if, if how the outcomes have been in the 11 times, but I, I, I don't know what the court looks at, but they would see that the city twice looked at a review on this property and that on both occasions we came to the same conclusion. But do I feel like I have 
more of an ability than cultural resources and the preservation board in these cases, or that this body does, I, I question that. I don't know if the planning commission is better at determining <coughs> cultural resources than the preservation board. That, that solves the issue about the review. So, yeah. cultural resources does what it does, it preserves culture. So, mm -hmm. uh, right. some people feel it's stacked. Right, <laughs> right. No, uh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, we're the we're the uh, a little more objective. Yeah, I think that's, that's, I think that's what we're supposed. To do. And we would be yeah. looking at right. their uh, the, right. what so, they looked at and yeah. what their so the the um, nothing else. Commissioner Power sort of described that is that when we established this second level of review, uh, it's just that you can see things that have come before you, uh, before these other bodies. Uh, and decisions have been made. Uh, there won't be new material presented, but there will be uh, the, the, the applicant will have a chance to make a, a, a certain degree of argument, and the cultural resources will have, office have a certain degree of, of, of argument. And it will be through a board that's a slightly different board, maybe has a different perspective uh, of, about things, and then you vote. And then one of the things that, that Mike referred to is then the buck stops. It's, it's, it's all the city activities have occurred, and then it goes to court. But we would be able to ask questions like why $300,000 in insurance proceeds haven't been used to stabilize the building since it was burned. Pretty limited. Yeah, very so limited. You have to determine things from from the record. From the record, record right. that well, it's exists. Well, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. it. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think it's reviewed. Yeah. yeah, but you don't, you, right. the, 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 engineer, the engineer doesn't get to come We're in and you quiz them. Determination of the preservation board. Yeah. Their process. Right. Yeah. Their process. Yeah. Um, the, so, so the engineer doesn't come and get to comment about right. the structural report. The real estate agent doesn't come in. Right. Right. No public We're just, we're no, just, no. Uh, yeah. Well, now we did one of these where there was where the owner access to them presented to us and all that. Stuff. Well, there's, there, we we usually establish a rule of how long each side gets to right. make an argument. You can make an oral and written argument, but it has to be based upon the right. record. Based upon the record, no new, yeah. not adding something new. Right, right. Yeah, I've been for this but more so on the new some side of things. <laughs> so it's it's uh, yeah. It, it, it's a, I'm looking at Adonna because she she ends up in, in, in anticipation that does the does the work of making sure the record is done because frankly the 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 heavy duty work in part is making sure because you you know that if we went to court we'd be finding we'd be compiling this record and the transcripts so the heavy duty part is getting that right making sure we proof it and do it right and share it with, with you folks. You then have the obligation to read it and study it, and then we'll have at a at a at a meeting, the the, the Betsy and and the applicant have a chance to make a make a, a guided argument to remind you of on page 34 with such and such information that type of stuff. And, and make a Should we want to take this on? What's the what's the timeline on being able to get this done? Get the information together. And Since this is the seventh, uh, the twenty seventh, which is a Tuesday, would be the last day that that meeting could go out and the, the record be brought together and distributed. Um, we'll which is, which is, I guess, a week and a day before our February meeting, which is a pretty short period of time. But you can, you have the uh, ability to. Takes us on at regular meetings or set up special meetings. Uh, the deck is. Would we not take it on? Pardon me? On what basis would we not take it on? I mean, it's sort of our job to be a, a second hearing. So, uh, I, because we would read it and go, oh, this is like, no way. I, I, I'd like you to make that judgment. If 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 the floodgates came and we were getting five of these a month to to question, maybe that might be a, a different context. 
answering Dick's question a little bit is is that it's it, it our legal time frame and procedure for proceeding from this point is quite generous for us to take time. Meaning we we compile the record and we get a time to do that. We would not be taking this up at the February meeting. Right. Yeah. So if you're the if you're the one to get this building down, if you're the owner of this property, and um, the likelihood of us coming back with a favorable, I think, is low on their end, then we're kind of pushing their demolition back in certain ways and if they have to take it to court. Right? Yeah. They don't have permission to tear anything down right now. And they wouldn't take it to court until we finish right, right, right. 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 So yeah. 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 They by asking us and we take it up, they it's not a fast track to court. I guess my motivation with my question was more about swiftness of this to to uh I assume the building is in jeopardy by not uh, shoring it up after the fire, um, and I'd want this to be a swift process. Uh, fair, you know. I want. I want to. I have, I have no idea. Where, I have. I'm not. I have not seen the building. I have no idea right. what this is. So I'm interested in personally seeing the information the on this, the record, so that we can be uh, uh, fair about this, um, but be swift about it too. So I've thought of two things, uh, and and you know, there's a. We're making some judgments here. We've been asked to make this judgment. Yes. They didn't have to ask us to do this. Um, right. um, and, you know, the Burling Commissioner has the duties to make sure that, that things are held and safe and, the, and, and people aren't endangered, so there's that part. Uh, yes, with all due speed, we would want to do yeah. things. We're, 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 we're allowed by the structure is not to not be rushed so, so that we... We, we don't necessarily, in that case, need to say, my God, we're taking this on, so we have to have a special meeting in two weeks. That's not the case. Yeah. We have time to get the record prepared, uh, do it at a meeting that we're, we're comfortable that we have time to, to, to be diligent and, and read your materials. Fair, but expedient. Well, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, this isn't yeah. Yeah. like slow and... <laughs> the Peabody building, where you've got lots of resources, I imagine the person that's wanting to make this uh, right. request doesn't doesn't have that type of. And you remember, <laughs> we do have a slight difference in that we can say yes, uphold, change, or make some modifications. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Okay. I I think we so should. So we uh, should vote uh, on whether we want to renew. I don't know. I'm. I just am personally kind of opposed to um, taking this up. I think that uh, you know Betsy and and team do a really thorough job of evaluating these things, not just based on their cultural merit, but their current circumstance and you know the fire and everything was obviously taken into consideration uh, upon that determination and. Uh, the preservation board obviously took three months to to think about this, and I, I don't say that slightingly, but um, you know they heard it, postponed it, heard it again. Um, I fear that maybe if we're just looking at their work, we might ultimately come to the same conclusion, which does nothing but delay and create another process for. The applicant, but um, but that's I think that's their risk, and they're sure. desiring to do that. And sure. I think I think I think we should hear it, and for that very reason, to do you know our due diligence for on their behalf. But either way, you know, yeah. And, and I don't want to, I personally don't want I don't think we should talk about it now to read into the tea leaves what we think we're going to. Yeah, yeah. Say. I, I don't want. To do I don't that think that's appropriate. But, right, but I also think that I mean. <laughs> They may want to take this to court anyway, so they probably might be just doing this as some sort of like perfunctory part of a process to just get it over with so that they can go to court and say that they did it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I mean, we're, likewise, I don't want to read into what judgments we may come up with yeah. as a committee, no, but no, I don't no. want to read into the mind of this property owner and say that, you know, they're doing this with the hope that we're going to overturn some sort of decision of the preservation board. But I they may be just doing this. To Commissioner Power's point is, is that at least we've done our full duty here 
if it, if they want to continue to take that further. So I, I think the unique thing is that the, like the three meetings, which is is rare, the deferral because of interest in public comment because there was a lot of public input on this one, and also the fact that you have an older person on the commission. I think those are unique things that make me feel like there may have been more review of this property than probably a lot that come to that board. But this commission has overturned, you know, decisions by the preservation board, and so it has served on both sides of, of this equation before, so I don't think it's, you know, fatal complete that, that the preservation board has. Well, and given that the alderman for the board is on that, it might be true of us to show that there's some impartiality in the process as well. I'm not going to vote against it. Uh, I just wanted to impart my, my first thought. Sure. But if it's the uh, you know, majority consent of the board, I'll, I'll support it. <clears throat> what kind of cost does it to City Hall? Oh, we just got new copiers. So. <laughs> 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 There's very little color stuff, I think. I, I suppose that uh, in, in that vein, uh, whatever is prepared for our review would then be likely uh, available should it then be taken to court. That, you know, just not double work on staff in that regard. I know you guys, there are tons of. Uh, uh, you know, I'll actually. Not I'll, 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 I'll make. Uh, uh, Don has lived through this and is sort of starting because the. Uh, the proofing that we do is pretty damn in earnest. Yep. And because we're doing it for you guys the same way as we're doing it yep. as if it was to go to court. Uh, probably the good news is we're also not necessarily having some uh, judge breathe down our neck that says, yeah. thou shalt do it by X, Y, Z date and get it right. And then that material could be. Then that material is locked in. That material then goes to court along with whatever your findings would be. Got it. So the ordinance says that a re so the ordinance says that a preservation denial can be appealed to the planning commission if they decide to hear it. You, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And are we? Uh, okay. are we For some reason, to... they gave us the wiggle room to not hear things. Mm -hmm. it, 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 that's a, a. That's right. Well, I'm just trying to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will say at, at one time. Um, it, it the uh, good point. Glad you reminded me of that. At one time, when the ordinances were d redone in 1999, they made it so that everything of the preservation board was a provisional decision and could go to the planning commission. Um, and that would mean if somebody did a vinyl window, and the preservation board said uh, you can't have a vinyl window, they could come to that us. That was wait a minute. So that that was out of out of kilter and thought. So because it was really meant. One of the things is, no, no. We trust the preservation board, but there's some things, uh, like a demolition, which is is once and forever when it's gone. That re that should be left to be uh, a chance to go to the planning commission. The planning commission make a judgment whether they want to hear it or not, and then if they chose to hear it, it's one final step at the administrative level, meaning the city level, before it would go to court. Motion. I move that we hear it. Second. I move the second is that we um, the planning commission review the decision on the preservation board. Maybe a previous um, role? Uh, I object to that. I'd like to have the roll call. Uh, Alderman Cohn? Aye. Commission, uh, sorry, Chair Stouter? Aye. Commissioner Bradley? Aye. Commissioner Powers? Aye. Commissioner Peebles? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Jay? Aye. Commissioner Spade? Aye. And the motion passes with all present voting yes. So we'll kick in. We'll make sure we do everything kosher in terms of getting in the review uh, to you. Uh, we'll work with the commission, with the chairman, about what would be timing of yeah. planning commission meetings to do it. Uh, the February meeting, uh, as Dick says, is tight uh, in some ways, and we have a, a busy meeting. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But Great. you'll go ahead and do the notification. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. We'll do the notification. We'll, we'll start doing that proofing. Uh, we'll go back to the top of the agenda. Uh, 
Um, we have the minutes that we need to approve from the December 3rd meeting, which were distributed to us. It's always nice to know who's sitting in the office. Move approval. Second to. And move the second to that. Previous role. Previous role has been requested. Are there any objections by the commissioners here? We, we didn't hear who was second. Who seconded, please? Um, I don't Dan. Do you know? No, Dan moved. Moved. <laughs> Pick a commissioner. Who's on first? We can pick it. Okay, Mike. Mike. Okay. <laughs> uh, are there any objections to the use of the previous role? Hearing none, the minutes have been distributed to us. And we'll go on to item number three on the agenda. And we'll tell you that item number three and number four are very recent. <laughs> Now. This is a uh, proposed amendment um, to the city strategic land use plan. If approved, it would be amendment number 12 of, of that document. And uh, it's basically it's simply requesting the approval of the planning commission to conduct a, a presentation and a public hearing at a future planning commission meeting. Um, the uh, proposed SLOOP amendment uh, is based on a proposed Chapter 99 blighting study and redevelopment plan that would be initiated by the city's land clearance for redevelopment authority uh, that would facilitate the potential development of a new facility for the National Geospatial Spatial Intelligence Agency. Uh, you may have read some articles in the paper about it recently where they're going to need to relocate their existing facility uh, along the, the riverfront. The, um, the strategic land use plan amendment would propose changes that would reflect the uh, proposed land uses and accommodate the, uh, the proposed facility. The, uh, the site that would be looked at um, is located in a portion of the uh, St. Louis Place and Car Square neighborhoods. Uh, it includes the entire Pruitt Igo site, this, this large collection of parcels, and would extend northward. Um, uh, to the uh, alley just south of St. Louis Avenue and is bounded on the west by North Jefferson Avenue and Parnell Street on the west and North 22nd Street on the east. Uh, just for orientation purposes, this, this is St. Louis Place Park, DeSoto Park, uh, that's the fire department headquarters. Sensient has a large manufacturing complex over here. Um, as you can see, there's a, a fair amount of vacant land in that area, uh, in addition to, to Pruitt Igo. Uh, that would be the site that would be looked at. The, um, the likely meeting at which uh, the presentation and public hearing would occur if the Planning Commission elects to proceed would be the Wednesday, February 4th um, meeting. And again, this is simply requesting your permission to conduct that presentation and public hearing. Um, at a future planning commission. So simply the February 4th meeting. And you have plenty of time to advertise. Them. So, so yeah, the, the, the shorthand of this is not all the material has been prepared as to what the content is, uh, but we need your permission because there's a 20-day advertisement requirement prior to the hearing. So you're giving us permission. So, yeah, February 4th, we're, we'll, we'll take this on. Go do the, you have our permission to go to the advertisement. It would be placed on, the, on September 13th. Uh, on the 14th, we would make available on the web uh, a, a, a more complete description of what it is that's, that's being there. So it's available to the public. They can send in written comments and they can come to the public hearing. Uh, but the main thing is getting your permission. Yeah, next, next planning commission meeting, we're open for it to be a public hearing. People can come to the podium and speak. We'd like for you to approve that. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. So moved and seconded that we approve the holding of the public meeting. Previous role requests. Previous role has been requested. Are there any objections to the use of the previous role by the commissioners here or on the telephone? Hearing none, we. So we will send you what we 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 have available on the on the website after the notice in the average okay. standards. and of course ultimately there'll be a, a full blown resolution for you to study. Okay. Item number four. 
As Don mentioned, the, the two resolutions are very similar. This also is, again, requesting your permission um, to uh, conduct a presentation at a public hearing at a future planning commission meeting. In this case, it would be amending uh, an existing neighborhood plan, that being a plan for the neighbors of the Fifth Ward, uh, which was a plan that was adopted by the planning commission uh, back in 2002. Uh, if approved, this would be amendment number two. Uh, it would be looking at the same geography, uh, same uses, uh, and would be obviously handled at the same planning commission meeting. Um, the other thing I might want to point out is if, in fact, the, the, the two amendments of these plans would be adopted, we would also be reviewing uh, the redevelopment plan that I uh, cited up uh, on the slide that would be submitted by LCRA um, that would uh, facilitate the development of that facility. So that would be a third item that would also be on that same plan. So if the deal doesn't, deal doesn't come through, then oh, no. okay. Then we go back and amend this back to the old plan. Okay. Because it's like now saying housing and retail and mixed use. We're going to say for a large industry, if the redevelopment plan doesn't occur, we'll be back here. For the so, so one, so two things. One, we'll share with you when we make it. The, the, the more detailed posting for next week. We have yet to get the read of all and for them to tell us all the specifics of the type of use that they're going to propose. And then we'll figure out strategic land use categories that would, would work for that. One of the things that's sort of uh, in everybody's mind is how to make that be something that's sustainable if that particular use doesn't happen, or that particular, uh, no, well, that particular use doesn't happen. Yeah, we obviously wouldn't want to go back and amend the plan for the next development, large-scale development project or other... We can't do a contingent amendment. Mm, we might think about that. But this plan yeah. doesn't have, have much legal clout anyway, right? It's just a neighborhood plan. Right? No, it does. It does. This, this particular one does. Oh. Now, the... the, the, the uh, yes, this was adopted by the Planning Commission. Yeah, prepared by a, a consulting firm. Um, Damn good one. Yes. <laughs> so, 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 I don't want to do inside baseball. The interesting thing about the Fifth Ward plan is for the area north of Pruitt Igo, the 2002 Fifth Ward plan said this should be a large scale development area. Right. Now, its boundaries weren't exactly co equal. With that boundary, but but the mass, the large geography of that area was was created with that designation. So the materials we'll, we'll get to review is what's the existing, what's the existing sloop, what would be the proposed sloop, and then the same for the the uh, neighborhood plan. But in essence, the the new proposal would be pushing the, the boundaries out for that one designation. I'm and this doesn't push you on time? I mean, hmm? what time are we trying to bring this? February, February 4th. And, and then subsequent to that, then the redevelopment plan would be reviewed to be in compliance with the strategic plan and the neighborhood plan. It wouldn't be easier to do this with the 353? No. Oh, well, uh, 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 our, I'm, I'm, we, <laughs> we have the information and knowledge of what's being proposed in the area. Uh, so we're changing the vision for the area in the, the, these two plans. Then the technical way of how that would be come about uh, is ultimately going to have some zoning changes and, in this case, a Chapter 99 versus the 353. A Chapter 99 is from the land clearance for the redevelopment authority, which is SLDC. They, in this case, will be the implementers of the Chapter 99 until the developer is designated later on. So there won't be a developer that will... SLDC will come to us when we review the Chapter 99, not a developer. So the Chapter 99 will be when they add back in eminent domain. And one of the things that they're looking at is, it doesn't, is creating it for this boundary giving LCRA the authority 
uh, to do land purchases. Uh, and in this, huh? LCRA has oh. authority. LCRA, right. Intrinsically. Intrinsically. And then they'll be, be uh, subject to still being written is the redevelopment, the uh, eminent domain right. Yeah. Right, so Michael's, Michael's exactly right. At, at the end of the scenario, there's, uh, the vehicle is LCRA uh, is acquiring this land uh, to be a, created as a site for geospatial to go to. And in that arrangement to get it ready for geospatial, all the land needs to be acquired. Um, and in the toolbox that expected to see in the, in the chapter 99 is eminent domain. Right. Which will be talked about at this meeting. Which will be talked about at this meeting. Uh, and more importantly, and not more importantly, but I, I <coughs> want to say for, for a particular specific point is because our notices for our general plans are, are, are pretty broad, is that Chapter 99 itself will have a public hearing at the Board of Aldermen on January 28th, and that will be uh, the type of thing that's posted on the light poles throughout the area. Uh, so that's, that's, that's a, a good net to, to make sure people are, are, are captured and they can come to that hearing. And they can come to ours also. And, and this is all being done on the IFCOM? I mean, they're still looking at multiple sites, aren't they? Uh, they've narrowed down from 200 to four sites. Three, uh, three in Missouri, one in Illinois. Uh, and the state has come out. David, make sure I get this right. No, no, no. I heard what you heard. <laughs> that site was off the table now because there is already a development plan in place. So what I'm about ready to say is, is the state of Missouri has now uh, said the, the city site is the state state's, the state's choice. Yeah. The, the, but we heard that secondhand. The, um, we know in the process, because it's, it's both uh, a uh, GSA process and uh, their vendor that's helping them uh, do this is the Corps of Engineers. Uh, we've heard that in their process, the, the, the technically they, they still have four. The state's backing us, so there's one here and there's one in Illinois. The one in Illinois is associated with Scott Air Force Base. Uh, the property itself would ultimately be held by the Department of Defense, not GSA, uh, and they own the adjacent land in what's called Air Force Base. So we keep being told is if there are still four, or five, or three, or two, Scott has to still be in the final running and compared to what the other ones are. So we're, in essence, being compared to Scott, a Greenfield site in Illinois. So, uh, and the, the Time frame for this is the environmental impact statement is due uh, next March, a year from now. Uh, the Corps of Engineers are the people that are doing that with CMH2 and PAL. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, the, the site has to be acquired. Is there anything in the toolbox um, down the road with Chapter 99? I know we've talked about this before, Don, but. You know, because of the footprint and because of the nature of a federal building uh, requirements, design requirements that the feds have, uh, what what can the city do to help? You know, if should they choose this site to use other tools to make this community friendly? You know, uh, the uh, one of the things, if you follow the paper, is that when they originally. You know, they're, they're relocating a site that's now by Anheuser-Busch. Currently has 3,500 employees in it, next to the flood wall. They're concerned, I'm, being, I'm going to be a lay person, that somebody with a pack at the sea floor, when the flood level was, could blow up the wall and wipe out this. Right. Sounds like I'll editorialize and say, the defense mapping people located themselves in the floodplain to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they did it twice in the metropolitan area. They did it for the right, they did the right map. Right. Um, so, so the the <laughs> so their original solicitation <laughs> was <laughs> original solicitation was for 50 acres, and then they changed it, 
and then increased it to, I think they increased it to 94 and then up again. Part of that gets to be is the building they have in West Virginia, which is the newest other geospatial thing, is really quite a spectacularly architecturally designed facility. The trick, though, is they don't like people to be close to it. So the, the, the footprint needs to have a 500-foot buffer from where the public is and where the building is. Is that without a tree, by the way? That's without any substantial trees. <laughs> okay. So we've been, we've, we, the, 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 the good news is the feds, the feds are required to retain any storm runoff they create. So they're, they're, they're agreeable to links. In that. So we've been pushing them with <laughs> we've been pushing them with the idea of how, what can we do in that in that open space? Yeah. And you know, it's not going to be a razor wire fence. Uh, you know, what can we do? Or, you know, can it be native grasses? Can it be you know those types of things? But they 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 they're, they're pretty serious that that the, of that buffer. And then at the entry points, they they have. Uh, some other buffering requirements. We need a motion. So moved. Second. Moved and second. <coughs> the previous role has been requested. Uh, are there any objections to the use of the previous role by any of the commissioners here or on the telephone? Hearing none, we're having a hearing. Thank you. So we'll be in room D. I mean, excuse me, we in won't be in room D. We'll be in the big one. Uh, are there any questions that anyone has on the delegated items? Yeah, they were handed out. Thank you all. Any new business? Uh, no. Did you do that already? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah. I'll just pass them out. If you would execute these conflict of interest things, our funder is requiring. They don't need to be used. Out of funder. It's not exactly the Paperwork Reduction Act, folks. We, we received block grant funds. Ah. The city's greatest benefactor is the federal government. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, if, if I can't get them down into their mailbox by 7.05, I'll probably be charging for it tomorrow. <laughs> It's not just, clear. It's not I think you can certainly adjourn it. Oh, okay. Uh, if there's no further business and no need for an executive session, do I have a motion to adjourn? Yep. So moved. Second. 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 Second.